Welcome to Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Joseph Long and our co-pastor is Linda Long. Listen, we thank God yet again. He has allowed us to see another Sunday, allowed us to see another day, allowed us grace and mercy, and we want to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Listen, we are welcoming you in to worship with us, and not only to worship with us in song, but stay for the word of the Lord. Again, I always tell you that the word of the Lord gives us power, gives us strength, and it gives us balance, especially in the world that we are living in on today. I need you to do me a favor. I want you to start a watch party, share the video. Not only that, but go to our website at www.secondsweethome.org. Again, it's www.secondsweethome.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church for all of your upcoming announcements. And again, we invite your family in to tune in with us on this lovely second Sunday of the month. Hallelujah, we just thank God for giving us grace that we're still here, we're still breathing, and we're still able to give him the worship that it is owed to him. Come on and worship with us. Hallelujah. Hey. Say, I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say. I don't know what you come to do. Hey, I don't know what you come to do. Let me hear you say. Yeah. 
And for that, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And how many of you know that even we're so free to worship God? There are places in the world that they cannot worship God in the freedom that we have. And we ought to take advantage, hallelujah, in this season, in this dispensation of time. Minister Mays, we ought to be glad that God has allowed us to be free. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I'm free. I'm free. Thank God that I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and stand right there in your living room. Come on and worship with us. Come on, we're going to have a Holy Ghost good time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him honor. Come on and give him worship. Hallelujah. How many of you are free? Who God sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on and worship. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We are free. Hallelujah. Despite what the world says, we are free. Hallelujah. Despite what COVID says, we are free. Hallelujah. Despite what the doctor may say, you are free. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together.
go. No more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Yeah. No more shackles. No more chains. No, 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 much you took your water for granted or something like that until your well run dry you never know how important it is sister Nene just coming to church if you can be honest real quick we moving when you work or you busy Monday through Friday and you say I don't want to be in church all day have you ever said that I don't want to go to afternoon service. I'm tired from this week. I had to repent because I know I've said it. Because we weren't able to come in the house of worship. And I'm so glad between Malachi and Matthew, God's voice did not go forth for over 400 years. What if because the church was shut down, God still wasn't speaking? Thank God for technology. Thank you, Jesus. We're still able to get a word from the Lord. Yes. Why don't you help me worship? Real soft, real soft. Say, I shall have, I shall have what I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. Say I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. 
So I'm going to speak into the atmosphere. Speak into the atmosphere. Touch yourself now and say, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. My healing, I shall have my deliverance. What I decree, my joy, I believe, yes, I believe, it belongs to me, yeah. You gotta open your mouth and speak those things that be not as though they already were. This is what I want you to help me do. Oh, no, 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 no. Just speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Say it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Do you believe it? Now say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say it. Yes. Say it. Anybody believe that it belongs to you? Touch yourself wherever you are. Say, it belongs to me. Say right there for a minute. Say, it belongs to me. It belongs to me. I've suffered long enough, so now it belongs. It belongs to me. I like that. Say right there. Say, it belongs to me. Can you encourage your neighbor? Say, it belongs to you. Say, it belongs to you. We ain't hate to say, it belongs to us. It belongs to us. I want to see you blessed. It belongs to us.
Last time, say, speak into the atmosphere. If you believe it, wherever you are, just say, I decree it in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. He said, if you ask in my name, that I'll do it in the name of Jesus. Muhammad can't do it. But Confucius can't do it. Buddha can't do it. But that name that every knee shall bow. And it said that name that every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So we give it to you now in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise. Do I have any praises in the house today? God is an awesome God. He is our own time God. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I know it wasn't by my goodness that I'm here today. But because of his mercy and his grace, somebody need to shout on that. Mercy and grace is still keeping us right now. Hallelujah. I have been enjoying the praise and worship. Hallelujah. If we ever need praise and worship, we need it right now. When you look over your life, you look all around, there's trouble everywhere. But we serve an awesome God. We serve a God that's able to do all things but fail. And I'm glad about it. If ain't nobody else shouting, I'm shouting about it. Because I know I should have been dead sleeping in my grave. But because he looked beyond all my faults. See, I got faults still too. I'm still praying. Keep praying for me. When somebody say, well, you know, certain things you shouldn't be doing or certain things people shouldn't say, I say, I tell them all the time, pray for me. He's not finished with me yet. And I thank God he haven't given up on us. So don't give up on God. I thank God for each and every one of you that allow us to come into your homes today. It is a pleasure just to be here. Because there's so many people that have lost their lives. So many people are on their sick bed and wish they could have been here today. I thank God for one more chance to get it right. Because God is still in the blessing business. God is still answering prayers. And I want you today, somebody is depressed today. Somebody feel like God has forgotten about you. But I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you this. Don't give up on God. Because he'll never give up on you. And whatever you need from God, he say, ask, and it shall be given. So we got to praise God. We got to ask God for what we want. And we got to continue to hold one another up in prayer. And don't get too prideful that when you're going through that you don't want to call somebody and ask them for prayer. See, if we start praying, prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations. We are so uh, haughty in our spirit and we feel like we don't need nobody. You are not an island. I'm not an island. I had to learn that the hard way when I'm trying to keep everything to myself. Sometimes it's just good to call somebody and just release some things you have inside of you. Not because they can answer your prayers, not because they can work your situation out, but because you need somebody there to talk to. So I thank God for today. I thank God for service. I thank God because he still allow us to have worship and praise. And it's something about being in the praise service. It's something about a song that lifts your spirit up. And today I feel good. I'm grateful to God for what we're doing and we're trying to work our way into opening again. But I want to tell everyone before I call for our covenant agreement that we have, the reading of it, I want you all to know that we're still 
and this virus. We still, this still going on. And we just had a holiday to pass and I was watching the news and the numbers went way up. I think they said the highest we have had in the last three months. People, people of God, let's be wise. It's no time for us to let our guards down. Please continue to wear your mask. Continue to social distance. Stop trying to hang out at the clubs, at the restaurants. Please be mindful of it because we're trying to save lives. God is sending us a word. Right now, it's time for us to be still and follow God's instruction. So let's be safe. Let's protect ourselves as well as everyone else. Amen. We're going to continue to pray for you, continue to pray for us, and continue to pray for all the churches that's open in God's name. Amen. Right now, we're going to have our covenant reading. Coming from Minister Armbrister. After that, we'll have our scripture coming from Minister Corey Stevens. And then our prayer coming from Miss Minister Sarah Taylor. Let's bring our family together. Don't leave your kids in another room. Right now, they're going on to study for school. Let them come on right now. Let them look, sit down and listen. We got to teach our kids that sometimes it's time to stop playing. God got a word for us. In a family that prays together, stays together. So right now we're going to have Minister Armbrister to come. Amen. Second sweet home. We come before you on this Sunday asking you to open your hearts and your minds to our covenant agreement. The Second Sweet Home Baptist Church covenant amen the agreement that we have between each other and the lord our god and so i hope that you will open your ears and open your hearts that these words may penetrate your ears and find way in your heart that it may uplift and elevate your spirit as we remember our agreement with the lord and it reads having been led as we believe by the spirit of god to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, and in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, in holiness, and in comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, to sustain its ordinances, its discipline, and its doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, an exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, avoid all backbiting, avoid all excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, to shun pornography, to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage, Second Sweet Home, to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and in distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and in courtesy in speech, 
to be slow to take offense, but always, always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rule of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles, amen, of God's word. So we thank you on today's Second Sweet Home for taking mind, taking note, for hearing, listening, and participating in our church covenant. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. Our morning scripture this morning will be coming from Colossians 3, verses 13 and 14. Colossians 3, verses 13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have any grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Verse 14 says, And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Amen. I'm thanking God on this day for this day. Gracious and eternal God, this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what it looks like and what it feels like, Lord, we know that you are still in control. Father God, we thank you that we are still here in the midst of a pandemic, oh God. We may have lost some loved ones, but we are still here, God, and we thank you for that, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we're still here. We may have some aches and pains. We may have... Have, have some things going on in our life, but oh God, we know that you're more than able to bring us through any and everything if we just keep our trust in you. Our only hope is in you, oh God, and we thank you, oh God. Lord, we thank you that we're able to still bring forth your word over social media, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for those that are listening in. Lord, we thank you for our shepherd and pastor that are diligently working to keep us safe, oh God, to keep us prayed up, oh God. And we ask that you continue to bless them, oh God, in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you for our minister staff and all of our members that are diligently seeking you, oh God, and wanting better in their lives, oh God. Lord, we thank you that we are still here in the midst of this pandemic, oh God. Lord, we know that you're more than able, and we thank you, oh God. Lord, I thank you that my family is still safe. Lord, we know that if we would just continue to pray and seek your face, that you will heal our land, oh God. Father God, let us be more humble to each other. Let us love each other more, oh God. Father God, let us show you love more. Lord, you're more than worthy and you're more than able, and I give you all the praise on today, oh God. Lord, we thank you that we are still here. Lord, I can't thank you enough that we are still here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father God, I pray that on this broadcast today that we will touch someone's life that want to have a relationship with you, oh God. Not a religion, but a relationship with you. We pray that those that are committed to you will stay committed, oh God, and to learn to love and trust each other as we love and trust you, oh God. And we thank you and we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' magnificent name. It is so, and amen. Prayer is definitely essential to the life of a believer. Amen. Prayer is nothing but a simple communication between you and God. And we thank God for that. Well, we're getting ready for the word of the Lord, so we ask that you prepare your heart and your mind after this song. Um, by us in the praise team, you will hear the next voice will be none other than our leader, our shepherd, our spiritual father, Pastor Joseph E. Long. Amen. So stay. Tune in for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pass me an old gentle Savior, oh, 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 hear my humble cry, oh, wow, oh, no. 
put your hands together. I'm in it to win it. No matter what the case, our God is able to bring us through. Praise God. I'm giving you time to get there, beloved. St. John chapter 15, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the fourth writer of the four Gospels. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. This is Christ talking. For those of you that have a King James Version, you will find these words in red italic if you have a red letter Bible. Christ is speaking. And the word of God says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. For it says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, watch this. He, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gathered them and threw them into the fire. And they are burned. Verse 7 says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. May God have the blessing to the readers and the hearers of his most precious word. On this morning, Minister Corey, I would like to pen this text and argue with your intellect on a subject which simply says, abide in me. Abide in me. Dictionary describe the word abide and abiding. The dictionary describes the word abide as to submit to, to regard, to give regard to, to stay and remain steadfast and faithful to. Amen. Here, as we look at the text, you will find out that Jesus was facing one of the most or the most terrible scene in human history. For the Son of God was about to be murdered at the hands of man. Do I have a witness? All that he had to face was waiting ever so heavenly in his mind. In particular, the reaction of everyone that was around him and how they responded to him and how they seen him going through and they knew that his fate was coming to an end because he had told them he had come from heaven to save them all. Yet you find in the Gospels that there were a few people that genuinely responded to him. Amen? He was even facing the collapse of his own inner circle. Somebody ought to say amen to that. His homies was acting up. You ever get around folk that's supposed to be your inner circle, the folk that you think you can rely on, and they start tripping just like everybody else. His inner circle was most tragically falling away. You do remember Judas, one of the disciples 
that was ever so present was him was in the process of betraying him. Peter, the leader of the disciples, was to deny him three times and even curse why he was doing it. Sound like some of us, don't it? Praise God. Not only do you act a fool, but you know you every now and then we got some church folk that like to cuss folk out. And get out of character. Y'all might as well come on in here. Let me preach for a few minutes. Not only did Peter have a problem, but the other disciples, the Bible said, was in a position in just a few more days. Somebody say, just a few more days. The very one that walk with him, the very ones that sing the many miracles that he had performed was getting ready to flee into the mountain for fear of their own life. It's amazing to me, evangelists, how the folk that, that say they'll ride and die with you when the going gets tough, the weak get going. <laughs> I, I know I switched that around. It says when the going get tough, the tough get going. But when we got some folk that act tough, that ain't really tough. Y'all yeah, might as well come on up in here. Everybody that say they got your back don't really have your back. Everybody that you think you can depend on. Do I have a church in here? Can't depend on. You know you ever, uh, ever been in an argument and you got three, four people behind you and then when the fight break out? You look around and the only one fighting is you. Y'all might as well say amen. His homies, his own men were walking away from him. And then there was the world of men that were rejecting him. The same God that got off of his royal throne. I feel like preaching this morning. They told his father, prepare me a body that flows both blood and water and I will go down and redeem mankind. These, these same folk were rejecting him. For the Bible talks about the religious list who strongly professed to know him and to live for him turned their backs on him. For it was the same ones that, that were saying Hosanna on one hand, but saying crucify him on the other. Oh, be mindful of those that smile in your face. All the time trying to take your place. Them backstabbers. You, you know a few of them. They, they didn't have a problem till God started blessing you. They didn't have a problem when you were driving a hoopty, but when you pulled up in that new car, they, they, they stopped speaking to you. I wish I had a witness in here. As long as you were unemployed, they, they were over your house. But the minute you got a job, somebody say job. They stopped speaking to you. Some folk can't handle your progress. I, I, I'm, I'm preaching already now. Some people can't stand to see you blessed. You know who your real friends are when God starts favoring you. Especially when it, it ain't their turn. Let, let, let me just drop that in there. You getting blessed and they ain't getting blessed. But they don't understand how blessings work. Because David said, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In other words, when I get blessed, if you're around me, there's some overflow connected. I need about three of y'all to write overflow. You need to write it down in your notes because every blessing that you receive wasn't your blessing. You just happen to be in the right place at the right time. You happen to be connected to the right person. It wasn't your favor that God blessed you with. It was the favor of the person that you were connected to. That's why every now and then you ought to thank God for my connection. Can, can, can I preach it? Not only did they, the religious list, the religious people uh, not honor him, but the non-religious people who didn't even attach themselves to God, nor did they profess even knowing him, had turned their back on him. He had come to save them all. And not one of them was standing with him 
in the most needful hour. It's amazing, Jackie, when we're really going through. Thank God for Jesus. That when everybody else has walked away, we have a God that is still standing by. Do I have a witness? And so in this need for our, as we look at the word of God, the thought of it all raced in the mind of Christ. And he thought back and recalled back in the Old Testament about the vine of God. And this vine of God was so often described throughout the Old Testament. You can find it in the book of Psalms. You can find it in the book of Isaiah. You can find it in the book of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Hosea. They talked about this divine vine of God. And it is said that God, Jesus, on this occasion, he uses this graphic lesson that his disciples needed to learn from this lesson. He chose to use the lesson of the vine and the branches. And it was in this lesson that Jesus was using the metaphor of the relationship of Jesus with the people of the world. Do I have a witness? Christ here makes it plain for us. He teaches us this lesson of the vineyard. He tells us about abiding in the vine. Abiding, my brothers and sisters, simply mean to submit to and to remain steadfast and faithful to. And not only does it mean to be steadfast and faithful to, but it also means that you must reproduce. You must be active as a vine. You must be active as a branch. You must bear some fruit. Do I have a witness? So as you read the word of God, you see abiding in Christ frees us from the bondage of this world. So my brothers and sisters, as I hurry to a close, I don't have long. The Bible, the text opens up with these four words. He opens up, verse 1, simply says, I am the true vine. This was a familiar symbol. God repeatedly used a vine as a symbol of his people in the Hebrew scripture. An example, you can find it in Psalms chapter 80, verse 8 and 9. Yet it was used sometime even in the negative sense. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Just prior to this incident and this parable that Christ was teaching, it was just in the previous week that Jesus publicly taught about Israel being like a vineyard in a parable of a vineyard. He taught that in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 44. Jesus told this parable that we read today to his disciples. And he tells them this, Corey, on the night of his arrest. Only hours before he was to die on the cross. He went and wanted them to have a clear understanding of their relationship. He would soon bring them through or allow himself to go through his death and his resurrection. And so he wanted them to understand the significance of really being connected. Do I have a witness in here? So the main point uh, is used in this parable, and it calls for us to live an abiding relationship with him. Do I have a witness? A relationship in which he lives in us and we live in him. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I have made up my Holy Ghost mind that I need the Lord every step of the way. Every day and every hour. Can I get a witness? 
I need the Lord on my journey each and every day. So my brothers and sisters, when we talk about abiding in Christ, many of us struggle with the word of Jesus simply because for some of us, if truth be told, it's hard for us to abide in Christ. Uh, somebody said, why I passed along? Because if you're going to problem with doing our will and doing God's will, if you're going to abide in Christ, then you got to give up your will to do his will. Do I have a witness? I hear you, second sweet home. I don't mind coming to church on Sunday morning. I don't mind paying my tithes. But I have a problem with giving up my desire. You know, there are some of us in the body of Christ. We just like doing our own thing. We don't mind singing on the praise team as long as we can party and drop it like it's hot. Pick it up, cool it off, and drop it again. But the Bible said, if you're going to be my branch, then you got to be my disciple. And Christ said it this way. He said, if you're going to be my disciple, you must first deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me daily. My brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he came into a world like this. And not only does God want you in a relationship with him, but he's the orchestrator of the relationship. For the Bible said, no man cometh unto the Father except he brings him. Let, let me pause right here and tell you today you didn't find Christ, he found you. I need about three of y'all to identify. I know you think in your mind that you made up your mind I was going to come to Jesus just as I was. But let me argue with you for a minute. It wasn't you that decided. It was God that decided for you. Somebody said, why do you say that, Pastor Long? Well, the reason I can say that then if you decided to come to Christ, you wouldn't have waited till the going got tough. You wouldn't have waited until your money ran out. You wouldn't have waited until you got a bad report. So my brothers and sisters, as I hurry to a close today, there's a few points that I would like to drop in your lap if you're going to have a, a relationship with God. If you're going to be the branch uh, of the true vine, first of all, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to be a part of the vine, God, you first of all got to have a, a relationship with Christ. You got to enter into a true relationship because uh, verse 1 says uh, that I am uh, the vine uh, and my father is the vine dresser. Do I have a witness in here? So then, uh, first of all, you got to experience, uh, if you want the abiding life, uh, if you want to be a part of the vineyard, uh, you got to enter into a relationship with God. And John uh, 3 and 3 says, uh, Verily, verily, uh, I say unto thee, except uh, you be born again, uh, you cannot uh, enter into the kingdom of God. There must be a point in your life, Sister King, uh, where you make up your mind uh, that I'd rather have Jesus uh, than silver and gold. Uh, there ought to be uh, a time uh, in your life uh, that you make up your mind uh, that I accept the Lord uh, as my Lord and Savior. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, 
and tell your neighbor uh, you got to enter uh, into a genuine relationship. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, the second thing uh, that you got to do, uh, you got to surrender uh, your life to him uh, and to his purpose. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, John 15 uh, verse 2 says, uh, every branch uh, that does not bear fruit, uh, do I have a witness? Uh, he takes uh, it away. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, and look him in the face uh, and say, neighbor, uh, don't you see uh, that that H uh, is capitalized? Uh, so it simply means uh, authority. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, that H-E uh, in verse 2 uh, is simply talking about God, uh, the Father. Uh, and when you a branch uh, that does not bear fruit, uh, God the Father uh, will take you away uh, because you're fruitless uh, and you're unproductive. Uh, I wish to God uh, I had a church in here this morning. Uh, you know uh, some church folk uh, that don't have no amen. Uh, that don't have no thank you Jesus. Uh, no hallelujah. Uh, no praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad uh, I come from the old church. Uh, when they said, uh, make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Uh, ah! Oh, shucks now. All ye land, save the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is the Lord, that he hath made you, and not we ourselves. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor you need to surrender to God's authority you need to stop doing things your way not only did he say that but he also says and every branch that bears fruit I'm glad he dropped this in Jackie for the holy rollers that do come to church that do sing in the choir uh, that do pray every week uh, that do read their Bible uh, the Bible said uh, the same God uh, purges you uh, grab your neighbor uh, and say holy roller uh, you ain't all that uh, because there is uh, Oh, shucks now. Some things that God's got to cut off you because you are out of order. Yes. <laughs> grab your neighbor and grab your neighbor and say every now and then, cut on me, Jesus. Every now and then. I need my tongue fixed. I need my feet fixed. Yes! Grab your neighbor and say every now and then God's got to pull me back to take me forward. God's got to break me to deliver me. Yes, I Anybody, 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 wash me from my iniquities. Yes, Lord, hold your hand up and say, I'm a believer, but every now and then, I need a spiritual makeover. Is there anybody that need a makeover? Say, Say yes. <laughs> I gotta hurry, y'all. The Bible 
Bible said he got to purge you that you might bring more fruit. Look at your neighbor and say stop bragging because you brought two people to church. It's still more people that need to be saved. Look at your neighbor. Stop bragging because you can sing a solo because there's somebody else that can sing it if you refuse to sing it tell your neighbor you ain't the only preacher that's got a word you gotta get a word to give a word yes yes Tell your neighbor, abide in me and I in you. The third point, I'm trying to hurry y'all. I'm out of time. The third point is you got to live unity. You got to live united with Christ. And you got to become one with him. Verse 4 says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. Grab your neighbor and say knucklehead did you hear that all this bragging that you doing about what you done you ain't really done nothing because you gotta be connected to the vine God said you can't do nothing unless I say so grab your neighbor shake them and rock them oh no we can't touch each other just look at them wave at them give them a high five no you can't touch them just wave anyway say neighbor neighbor you gotta abide in the Lord Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor and say, I can't do nothing. I can do nothing without him. Verse five says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Look at your neighbor, say, keep repeating that. He is the vine and you are the branches. A branch cannot live without the vine. Do I have a witness in here? He said, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Do I have a witness? He closes that verse by saying, without me, you can do nothing. Point four, you got to be transformed. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, you seen the movie Transformer. You look like one thing, but God's got a new purpose. Grab your neighbor and say, don't judge me for what I look like. I'm simply about to be transformed. Tell your neighbor, I ain't what I look like. Ain't God all right? Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed unto this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need a mind change. Neighbor, you need a heart fix. I got to leave y'all now. I'm getting ready to go to my seat. And the last point, you got to bear. You got to bear some fruit. Do I have a witness?
witness in here grab your neighbor say neighbor you got to be a fruit bearer you got to believe in the word you got to believe in the testimony you got to get in Jesus second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says if any man be in Christ he becomes a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things become new get ready get ready hasta la vista arrivederci bye bye I'm on my way out of here I just stopped by to tell somebody I'm in the vine and the vine is in me yes yes ain't it all right say yes yes your neighbor and say neighbor I got it I got it I got Jesus and that's all I need grab your neighbor and say neighbor I got it everything I need is in the vine I'm gonna abide in Jesus Ah. 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 Tell your neighbor, I'm there in Jesus. I can't move until he say so. I'm going to stay there as long as I have to stay. I'm going to stay there, Michelle, until I get a word from the Lord. And when I get a word from the Lord, I'll do what he tell me to do. Is there anybody, any, anybody that's ready to do what the Lord said? Get up on your feet and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you, are you abiding in Jesus? Neighbor, are you connected? Look at your neighbor, ask him a question. Are you connected? I need y'all to write it out. Are you connected? I need you to shout it out. Are you connected? But it's not enough for you to ask the question. I want to hear what your response is. If you're connected, let me hear you say yes. If you're connected, lift those hands up. Give God some glory. Take five seconds. Give him some. Light everything. Light everything. Light everything. That have breath. Praise. 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 Grab your neighbor. Say, if you can't praise him, let me praise him. Sit on down. I got a feeling I got a feeling everything gonna be all right I got a feeling 
There's some breakthroughs on the way. Shout out to my breakthrough. My breakthrough is on the way. God bless you. I'm in the I'm in the vine. Are you in the vine? Are you in the vine? Are you connected? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your kids. Put your arms around your children. Say we are connected. Hallelujah. I was watching the news this morning. And uh, somebody put a Black Life Matter sign on their line. Somebody ran by and shot in the window. And we living in a mean world. We're living in a wicked world. Uh, they gonna shoot in somebody's window. Uh, just because Black Lives Matter. Uh, ain't it sad uh, that folk feel that way? Uh, but you might shake your head huh? but I'm not upset huh? that they shot in the window huh? I'm upset huh? because they could have been bold enough huh? to come to the door huh? and said how they feel huh? ain't it amazing huh? folk always want to sneak huh? and do stuff to you huh? but the devil is a liar huh? what I'm thankful for huh? They shot in the house, but God kept the bullet and nobody got hurt. Grab your neighbor and say, yay, though they slay me, yet will I serve him. Yes, black lives still matter. No matter what you do, I'm going to continue to tell the world that the wages of sin is still death and the gift of God is eternal life. I'm going to tell them he went to Calvary. I'm going to tell them he died on the cross. I'm going to tell them they laid him in a viral tomb. I'm going to tell them early, early, Sunday morning, he got up. Didn't he get up? All power, all power. Ain't he all right? Say yes. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. God bless you. God bless you. Stay in. Abide in. Live in. Divine, y'all. With God. Hallelujah, the doors of the church is open. Know that all that we are, all we can do, we owe it all to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There might be somebody out here today that is without God on your side. Give God your heart. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him on this morning. Hallelujah. If you are listening and you're still in tuned in to us, hallelujah. We want to invite you in to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus has been risen from the dead, you shall be saved. Someone says that simple. Just believe and confess. 
with your mouth and with your heart. Your heart and your mouth has to line up with the same confession. Hallelujah. So we want to in, in extend to you the plan of salvation. We don't want to leave this earth without having Jesus Christ a part of your life. And so if you're listening to us, send us a message. Send us an inbox. Write us a letter. Call the church. Get in tune with us. Hallelujah. So that we can continue to pray with you, to impart the wisdom of God into you, and that we'll be able to cover you with the word of the Lord on today. Our minds and our hearts are on fire from the word of the Lord. How many of you have been blessed on today by our shepherd with that wonderful word of the Lord? Hallelujah. You ought to learn how to be a tree that bears fruit. Not a tree that doesn't just talk a good game. We got a lot of people that talk a good game, but they're not bearing any fruit. And my prayer to you on this morning is that the Lord will allow you to be a fruit bearer, that the world will see the God inside of you and say, what must I do to be saved? Who is that God that you are serving? Who is that God that is healing you? Who is that God that you are praying to? Who is that God that is transforming your life? Hallelujah. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And he is so awesome. He's real and he's worthy to be praised. So again, we extend to you the plan of salvation and the right hand of fellowship to come and worship with Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church located at 19130 Beaconsfield between McCormick and Maraz, Detroit, Michigan. The zip code is 48224. If you want to send a letter, come and partner with us. We would love to have you as well as your family be a part of God's family because this is nothing but a family and we ought to learn how to extend an invitation not only to people we just know but extend that invitation to someone that you don't know and give them Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. And we just thank God. Amen. For all of those of all those of our members that have come in to help and to support on this day. Again, I want you to continue to tune in to our website, tune in to our YouTube channel and to our Facebook page. Amen. That there will be a lot of different announcements for our members as well as visitors in the upcoming months of we're getting ready to open up. But we want to make sure that you are in tune in to all of the announcements. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody get blessed the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. My praise shall continually be in his mouth. Let it run. Praise God. I'm getting up before the people of God because we have a need and a responsibility to keep our doors open. And I'm soliciting to all of our members and all of our supporters that from week to week we're functioning on the contributions in which you give. And when you don't give to the church, we don't have to pay our bills to meet our mandate. And we're struggling from week to week and we're asking you to dig deep in your heart and in your spirit. If you're part of the branch, if you're a branch of the, in the vineyard of Christ, you have a responsibility to make sure that God's house is taken care of. And I know a lot of you that consider yourself members of Second Sweet Home that have not done anything all year I'm asking you, there is a need for you to show up this week so we can meet our monthly obligation, so we can pay our light bill, our gas bill, our mortgage bill. The bills don't stop just because you're not here. So I'm asking you to dig down deep and text it in and give it in. Come by the church and drop it off. Because if we needed you, we really need you now. We need you to show up and help us keep the doors of God's house open. We cannot make it without you. So as your pastor, as your leader, as the man that hears from God and abides over your life, don't forget to remember where all of your blessings is coming from and share back with the kingdom of God. Let me see you this week. Take time out today and text to give and give to the church that you might continue to be blessed. May God bless you and may God keep you. We're praying for you.
that God will continue to supply your need according to his riches and glory. If all hearts and minds are clear, that concludes our service for this week.